Hello, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast, Eat Better Food Today. I'm your host, Ken Cunahan, and I'm excited to be sharing insights on why we believe that health and longevity begins with the food we eat. The goal of this podcast will be to inspire, educate, and enable folks to live a healthier life and do it affordably. My wife and I have been on this journey for over 10 years and continue to work on it every single day. A percentage of the profits from this podcast will be put towards child hunger with an initial focus on the poorest suburb in America, East Cleveland, Ohio. On this episode, by the way, I've talked to uh, Ismail since I met him. I just haven't really met many times. So, um, On this episode, we're grateful to have Selena Kunanen and her patient, Nevada. Nevada is a cancer survivor and battles type 2 diabetes. Her A1C numbers are down after her food for life experience at university hospitals, and she knows how to better cook for her six children. Selena is the Chief Diversity, Equity, and Belonging Officer at University Hospitals and has been working with UH's Food for Life program. The Food for Life program now has five locations, one being in the UH University Hospitals Community Wellness Center at the Davis in Glenville. Since 2018, this program has distributed more than 450,000 pounds of healthy food to nearly 8,000 patients. Selena has been a healthcare professional for more than 20 years. In this episode, we'll explore Selena and Nevada's thoughts on food, health, longevity, and discuss why food is so important to Nevada's journey. Welcome, Selena. Welcome, Nevada. Thanks, Ken. Thank you. I'm very excited to have both of you today. I've never, I'm always doing interviews, but never with uh, two individuals and never with a healthcare provider or patient. So thank you very, very much. So I always start out with kind of a couple icebreaker questions. So the first one is, Nevada, what, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Actually nothing. Actually nothing, okay. I'm not really a breakfast person. I'm mm-hmm. learning to eat breakfast a little bit more, especially with diabetes, being on Trulicity as a medication. But I'm not really a breakfast person, so as fasting, but my fasting time would be morning. I generally go sometimes and then eat lunch, dinner from there. So that's kind of how my day goes. <laughs> how about you, Selena? What did you well, do? gosh, uh, breakfast is the most important uh, uh, meal of the day for us and our family. It's the one time, you know, I have two teenage boys. You know, before sending them out the door for school and everything, usually during the week, it's like I know they've eaten a healthy breakfast. On the weekends, we like to sleep in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, So this morning, and I always cook a big breakfast, so usually bacon, eggs, um, potatoes, sweet potato. I made like a little sweet potato hash with onions and potatoes and vegetables in there. Um, And then sometimes um, some toast. I had some leftover uh, banana chocolate chip muffins that I made earlier this week. You're making me hungry. I'm <laughs> sorry. I should have brought some. I didn't even think of it. Um, but I, you know, that's my happy place. When I'm not at work, I'm in my kitchen. Nice. Very nice. Well, I think I mentioned I just came up a five-day fast, and so I've had avocado toast for breakfast this morning, and that's it. So I'm still hungry. <laughs> um so the home pantry is an important part of how any healthy food journey begins. At least that's what I've been told. So Selena, if we went to your pantry at home, what would we find? Wow, I just I did did just go to the grocery this week. So we have um, the thing about the pantry. Um, you know, I I've been dabbling in some more gluten free products because I'm having some thyroid problems of my own, and we think it's due to inflammation due to maybe gluten and dairy. And so I'm on this kind of journey myself personally, trying to figure out incorporating more gluten-free products into my life. So I have some gluten-free cereal in the pantry, um, looking at gluten-free pastas, which some of them are terrible. (laughs) I'm going to be honest. Um, A lot of, you know, um, staples. I have some protein bars for the kids. If I, you know, pack them in their lunch, um, I always try and have, when I think about my refrigerator, you know, a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables, lean meats and you know kind of just be more conscientious of what I'm buying too mm-hmm. um I don't know if you saw that twin experiment on Netflix that documentary it's I fascinating did. yes so fascinating about giving one twin plant-based and the other one eating like a modified carnivore kind of diet and just the results of that so it's it's really gotten me thinking <laughs> more about what I buy and put in my my pantry and my in my refrigerator 
Very nice. And I, I guess I'm curious, Nevada, in your case, how has your food pantry changed since you started working with the Food for Life program? A lot of my food pantry has changed with um, starches in particular, like in, like in, say for example, white rice, brown rice, more mm -hmm. brown rice. Um, we, although we eat white potatoes, my choice preference is a sweet potato. Um, you know, with other things like lentils um, in, incorporated in our diet, something that I never really ate. I've ate, eaten like lentil soup before, mm -hmm. but never really taken on the fact of adding lentils to everyday meals or different things. So just things like that squash and things different that I didn't do before, but I'm willing to try now and it's made a world of difference. There's some really good squashes out there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Especially at the West Side Market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Selena, can you kind of explain to the audience what the Food for Life program is and why it matters and, and some of its core values? Yeah, so the Food for Life Market was an initiative um, that was started in 2018, really looking, um, you know, we see it all the time as healthcare professionals that nutrition plays a huge part in the health of our patients. And if people don't have access to healthy food, you know, they don't have, they don't get that nutritional value into their daily meals. Um, and we also know that a lot of patients, especially in families and communities in our area, are experiencing food insecurity. Um, we know that the state of Ohio uh, ranks very high in terms of food insecurity, and actually Northeast Ohio and Cleveland has the highest number of food insecure residents and food insecure children in the state of Ohio. Um, and so I think from our point of view as a healthcare organization, we knew that we needed to do something about that to try and help patients um, go beyond that just delivery of health care. But like, if, how, are, how are we expecting patients to really improve their health if they don't have access to the things that they need, such as healthy fruits, uh, fruits and vegetables? And so we started the market in 2018. Our first location uh, was opened at the UH Otis Moss Junior Health Center um, in the Fairfax neighborhood. And um, we, since then, we've kind of expanded the markets to some of our regional hospitals. We have one in Conneaut, one in Portage. Um, we also have one at the main campus um, at Cleveland Medical Center. And then our fifth location, as you mentioned, is now at um, the UH Community Wellness Center in Glenville um, at the Davis Apartment Homes. And so through this initiative, we are looking at um, providing patients with a, an existing comorbidity, whether it be diabetes or obesity or high blood pressure or if they're pregnant, um, and supplying them with foods and uh, fruits and vegetables and lean meats and, and, and pantry staples as well. Um, patients, once they get referred into the market, so say um, somebody comes into my office and identifies yes uh, to one of the food insecurity questions, um, we ask them uh, one of two. I can put a referral into the um, into Epic, and then that generates um, a an appointment for them into one of our Food for Life markets. They get to choose which location they go to. Mm -hmm. And then from there, um, patients come in and they have one-on-one -on -one dietitian counseling, um, and they do a very thorough intake with the patient. They take a look at their chart. They say, you know, looks like you have X, Y, or Z. Let's talk about what the things you've eaten. Let's talk about the other food choices you can make, mm -hmm. which might be better options for you if you have diabetes or if you're trying to lose weight or if you have high blood pressure. And then they get food for um, up to a family of four for a week, and they can come back every week, every month for six months based on one referral. After those six months, um, people are like, well, is that it? Does, does, does it end? I said, no, they just need to make sure that they come back and see us. Uh, see their provider to get another that referral renewed. So, um, and we do this in partnership with the Greater Cleveland Food Bank, who's the main supplier of all of our markets, as well as our nutrition partners at Sodexo. So, I mean, it's a great, everything I've read about it, it's a great program. And I will post a link because when you did the interview in December, the two of you, um, you actually did, there was some video of the food market at uh, where you were at. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's pretty, it, it, I, you know, I've spent my life as a certified nurse midwife over 20 years, and yes, the care that I provide is important to patients, but I almost feel like this has really given me personally a lot of joy in being involved in this project mm -hmm. um, because it's digressing the things that I would see in my patients every day is that they couldn't, you could tell them all you wanted till you were blue in the face to say, well, you need to eat healthier. 
right? But they don't have access to that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's trying to think about ways as healthcare organizations, how we innovate and how we think differently about being change agents in dismantling some of these systems of oppression that have been put in place to oppress communities for so long. And so how are we part of that solution? Excellent. I mean, it's an excellent program, so thank you. Thank you. So Nevada, what led you to the Food for Life market and program? One of the things that led me to the Food for Life market is, um, as we mentioned before, I'm a cancer survivor and also have type 2 diabetes. Um, but not only that, I have other health issues that came along with those battles as well. I had to have half of my thyroid removed, so just a lot of issues. I won't name them all, <laughs> but just a lot of issues that I've suffered with, you know, since being diagnosed in 2017, um, type 2 diabetic. I was pre-diabetic during pregnancy first um, and had gestational diabetes with like four of my children, so and then went on to be type 2. But one of the things that led me to Food for Life, I remember in 2020, going to a nutritionist, a weight management doctor and a nutritionist, and I was frustrated in tears. I was on 26 different medications and wasn't taking in much food, wasn't eating much, but I was blowing up like a blowfish. Um, and I was suffering, you know, mentally, emotionally, in every way. And one of the things that the weight management doctor says, she said, first of all, I want you to give yourself grace because you have been through a war and been through a lot. Secondly, we're gonna get you to the point where you are at a healthy weight that you want to be at, but also understand that some medications are, these are side effects, weight gain, um, you know, like um, the one in particular that gives you a lot of water weight gain that they give you, um, I'm trying to think of it, I can't think of the name right now. From steroids but, maybe? Uh, yes, the steroids, mm -hmm. yes. Um, those are the things that I used to gain like and when I was going through cancer and would be in the hospital for a week I would gain like 20 25 pounds in that week wow. so that's 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 a lot that could be frustrating you know and the thing that led me really is I want to change my lifestyle I want to change being on so many medications that have side effects and I want to take me and my family on a healthier lifestyle journey so that was the main thing that led me to food for life so when I was in a doctor's office in my cardiologist's office um, I seen the advertisement for it and I seen like what you had to do and what you had to do to qualify and I'm like oh I fit a, the whole profile you know <laughs> so I talked to my doctor about it and she did the referral and I went on from there I started in 2021 and from there, I have been successful. You know, um, my A1C is down the lowest it's been since 2017. Um, when I did my la last interview, I lost 17 pounds over a year, but I've recently been losing more and more as I go along. But it's just a matter of eating right, eating healthier, having those healthier options available to me and a family. And I have such a big family having six children that's a lot of people to prepare food for but at the same time you you lead by example as a parent and i'm the type of parent that you know my we come from old school you know they say whatever we put in front of you you eat well we know we live in a different world today <laughs> but my children pretty much if i sit there and i eat a butternut squash and they see me eat it they'll at least try it even if a few of them don't like it. And why? Because I led by example. So a lot of the different ways that we eat now, um, according to how we eat, ate previously, is all because of what I've introduced to him and how I led by example. So that is the main reason why I had, you know, went to Food for Life and it has been such a wonderful success for us as a family. So how many medications are you on today? I'm only on, le uh, actually like less than 10. Wow. Yes, it's maybe even less than that because every time I go back, they're deleting something. Nice. Yes. Very good. Nice. Amazing. Yes. I'm going to get you, I'll put a link on the podcast, but I'm also going to get you, a, there's a book, uh, and I can't remember the name of the book or the author, but somebody that deals in this kind of health and wellness space, but it basically kind of gives you recipes for kids. Mm -hmm. It kind of takes the all the healthy food we're talking about and does a little bit of disguising so mm -hmm. that they, you know, when they see French fries, they're sweet potato yes. French fries instead of 
yeah. a fast food thing. Or some right. black bean brownies. That's yeah. Nice. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll get you I'll get you a copy of that after. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, so, Selena, how, we talk a lot about food as medicine on this program. So how would you say food, for food as medicine and kind of the food for life program kind of mirror one another? You know, I think I think back to my training as a nurse and as a nurse midwife, and I, you know, certainly the training that I know uh, that happens in medical school. I mean, and I've been out in practice now for you know twenty some years, and we never got any real education in nutrition. Mm -hmm. It's frightening. Um, I think that's changed more in some of the newer curriculums in both nursing school and medical school, but I think it's still not enough. Um, and nutrition is such an integral part of any diagnosis. If you want to talk about Crohn's disease or irritable bowel syndrome or, um, you know, diabetes or, you know, obviously obesity, if we want to talk about hypertension, what you put into your body is so important. And, and uh, I, I almost felt like it at, at a disadvantage, right, in caring for patients and not knowing enough. So a lot of what I've learned is things that I've learned, and I'm not a nutritionist by any means, but, you know, just things that I'm trying to do in my own life and also so that I can help educate patients and families around that. And so I think the important part is you see these success stories um, like Nevada's who is is changing her traje her trajectory and not only hers, but that of her children. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's that those uh, generational, what, what's the effect of that generationally and how that will positively impact her family for years to come um, because of instilling in them these healthy food um, these things to do to live a good lifestyle and, and, and live a healthy and long life. Um, I think that so often um, we don't know enough and, and we need to be better educated as healthcare professionals about the importance of nutrition in any type of diagnosis that we are dealing with. Um, most, you know, what's interesting me right now, um, we have a huge mental health crisis in this country, right? We saw it during the pandemic that's only been amplified. You look at, you know, not only the COVID pandemic, if you look at, um, you know, racism as a public health crisis, the, the experience of black and brown people, I as an Asian American and the things that you experience there and how that affects your mental health and state. Um, there also, there's a lot of really interesting data showing around what you eat and how that affects, you know, your depression or anxiety, that you can actually use food to help counter that, mm -hmm. um, which is really very interesting to me and is probably maybe then I'm trying to entice some people of my, my friends in psychiatry to help us to do a little bit of research in the food for life market to see, you know, well, let's take a look at some people with some diagnosis around depression and anxiety um, and looking at whether or not access to healthy food makes them feel differently. You mm -hmm. know, um, I think it's, it's far underrated about nutrition and I'm glad that we're talking about it more like this podcast or, you know, the having, uh, you know, uh, the markets like we've, we've put up and just really um, bringing that more to the forefront for people, for not only providers and and uh, and healthcare professionals, but really in our patients and communities as well. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it, we had on the last podcast, I had a Dr. Bradley, she used to work at the Cleveland Clinic for Functional Medicine, and she talked about an example of a patient she had that could not, you know, and thought she was infertile, couldn't get pregnant, couldn't get pregnant. Yep. She changed her diet, and lo and behold, they she had a child. So it's just, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. just another example of yep. food, right nutrition, kind of helping to absolutely, yeah, absolutely you know, make you a better person. So I guess I'd also like to just for the audience here, so a description, your uh, definition of whole foods and ultra processed foods. Ooh, anything that comes in a box, right? <laughs> like, um, I feel like it's ultra processed or the things like I really am very a lot more conscientious of making everything like buying, you know, a butternut squash at the store, right? Mm -hmm. Not looking at things that's um, or not looking at, um, you know, people buy those frozen meals and everything. Like when I was I remember when I was working on the floor as a midwife and taking call, people were bringing these things that they microwave and everything, it just never appealed to me, right? I feel like those things, and even though they're called healthy, mm -hmm. they're filled with so many, you can't even read anything on the label, right? Like, I don't know what that is. Um, so I think about Whole Foods as not the store, right? But really more so, you know, the things that you buy in that store or any other grocery, um, you know, uh, 
whole, you know, fruits and vegetables, making things out of them, uh, out of something, ma making things, your meals out of those, like taking a whole butternut squash and making a butternut, um, you know, butternut squash soup or, you know, roasted. I, I love doing a lot of uh, roasted root vegetables in the oven, nice little olive oil, salt and pepper, you know, making things like that um, instead of buying those things. Actually, you know, my, my family, we don't eat out a lot. We really don't. We eat at home a lot. I cook a lot. Um, and it's because I hate the thought of um, getting fast food or takeout. It just, I, I ate out twice this week for work stuff. And I was like, oh, I just want to <laughs> cook myself. Um, and um, it doesn't mean that we don't eat pizza or we don't do anything. So we try to make our own pizza, right? Like all those things. But it, it's just, uh, if I can't read the label, I'm just a little bit more conscientious of like, mm, I don't know what they are. I, and I think it's a kind of a good guide for most people when you talk about processed foods. Yeah, I would agree. And we've talked on a show previously, if it has more than six ingredients, beware. And if you can't understand what's on the label, don't buy it. If you can't, it doesn't make any sense to you. Right. So yeah. could, couldn't agree more. Yeah. So Nevada is part of the Food for Life program, at least um, the, the little bit of research that I did and what AC uh forwarded to me. It, it looks like there's, there's a cooking part to the, so it's not just a market to pick up fresh foods, but there's also a cooking part of it as well. Yeah. Can you kind of explain how yeah. that worked for you? As part well, of the um, the, one of the things that really stood out to me is like when I first went in, um, just not just getting the food, but they also gave recipes. So like one of my favorites is the lento tacos. I've never ever heard of nothing like that. <laughs> but um, my both of the Jenny and um, both of the people that work with me, they had said, try this for the kids. You know, it's better than ground beef, better than this, something different. Mm -hmm. You know, but it was it was like how we make tacos at home. But it, with this with the lentils and I, I just thought, oh, this is amazing. Something good to try. But not only that it offered ways like certain things that you don't know like some people don't know how to prepare kale or greens or like you said butternut squash or a zucchini certain things like that um people don't know how to prepare on them all they offer that and then also i had learned about that they do like little cooking classes so they offer like little cooking classes where you come and uh, there's a shelf there to show you how to prepare like healthier foods and then each participant can go home with a bag of food to like make the meals that they prepare and i just thought that was just awesome so it's for things that i don't know how to cook or never cooked in my life and me i've never been like just because i'm african-american i'm never straight soul food because of my undergraduate and um you know graduate degrees i went to college so i was exposed to more so i love Mediterranean. I like to eat vegan sometime. I fast sometimes. Sometime I like soul food. Sometime I don't. Sometime I don't eat sweets. I, uh, my birthday is in February, so I may want a cake. But all <laughs> things in moderation for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but never too much of anything. And when we take away all of the bad things or at least eliminate them, as she said, you know, it's not like we don't eat out. That's occasionally now, you know, like my birthday or something like that. One of my favorite things is Olive Garden. I love Italian food. But to my body, um, you know, eating a lot of pasta, breads, that's not a good thing. So you have to counteract that with something different. Or like just recently, I got a pasta from Food for Life when I went last month. It was made out of chickpeas. And that's different, but at the same time, I'm willing to try it and willing to let my kids try it because that's a different way to eat pasta instead of just the regular way. Right, right. You know? Did you yeah. like it? I did. You did? I, yes. I have chickpea pasta yes. in my pantry as well, and it's, I was sitting there, I was like, I need to... Yeah. I need to try this. Yeah. So I was gonna. I was thinking about doing that this, yeah. this weekend. Because I just think certain things, you just fix it your own way. Yeah. And you don't have to salt it down or put certain things in it, but you fix it your own way and you'd be surprised how a lot of things are acquired taste, but you'd be surprised yeah. how you like a lot of things. I like a lot of different type of foods, Asian, Mediterranean, you name it, I like it. So, you know, I just think the exposure mm -hmm. for one mm -hmm. to different types of foods and being open to that, that's what helps you along the way. I will say too, just in terms of the, the kitchens, you know, we started when we started the food for life market in 2018 over at um, Fairfax 
Um, we actually, and we opened our Rainbow Ahuja Center, Ahuja Rainbow Center for Women and Children, um, which is in the Midtown area. You know, Dave's Supermarket brought was brought in there. You know, when we said we're we're opening here, we we you know we were in talks with them, and they said we'll open here as well. It was the first grocery store in that Huff neighborhood in Midtown. Um, which is amazing. There's a teaching kitchen there, and so our UH dietitians will go there and do cooking demos and all of that. Since then, we've opened um, another, we have our Bedford uh, Community Wellness Center as well, um, and they have a teaching kitchen as well as there. And then, of course, at the Davis um, in Glenville, we have our Food for Life Market and our teaching kitchen together. Um, and so our dietitians, they um, they're fantastic. They come in and work with our chefs uh, and they uh, record these and so they make them available for people to also watch. A lot of our employees have looked at those too, right, are, are looking to improve their health as well. And so we want to make sure that we're looking at everyone both inside of our organization and, and in the greater community too about like how can we share some of these practices and share the our love for cooking and, and get people to learn how to cook different things. Um, and so I've learned I've learned a lot by watching some of their demos my, in my, in myself. And so it's been fantastic. Um, you know, I think at the opening of Glenville, they did a um, like a stir fried tofu. Chef Tony did. It was fantastic. I loved it. So, yeah. And I'm not really a tofu person, but I like that. And so I'll cook it at home now. I'm not a big tofu person, but I made something out of tofu a couple of weeks ago. It was actually really good. So, yeah. 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 So you're saying these the videos are online, like available to the public? Is that... Um, I will have to check on that and see. I okay. do believe that they're available to the public, but we'll see. Um, I know, yeah, I believe they are, and Macy could probably help us with that. But um, they are, you know, they are recorded, and we made sure that we also make we make sure they're available for our employees as well. Great, Nevada. Anything else you want to share on the program itself and kind of how it's helped you or your kids or your family? One of the things that I really can take away from the program is the one on one. Um, with the dietitian. Um, Jenny has been such a godsend and to come in there when I was in the state that I was, you know, really frustrated with my diet, trying to do certain things, sometimes even starving myself, you know, that's not a good thing with the health issues I have. Um, but just someone to listen to and to say, okay, this is what we have. This is what started to do this. This is one of the reasons I start eating breakfast. So you all were talking about <laughs> avocado toast. I love avocado toast. Yep, that's my shame. Um, I love. I will take me a piece of wheat bread or oat bread, mm -hmm. toast it lightly with avocado, a tomato, and you sprinkle a basil bagel seasoning on there. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and sometime when I want to, you know, add a little extra, I'll add some provolone cheese on top. Uh -huh. so good <laughs> but things like that mm -hmm. that I never ate before but it, I don't like breakfast but it, it, it makes a difference mm -hmm. when you eat something different and it entices you to say okay well let me have breakfast because breakfast is the most important meal of the day <laughs> and regardless if you're not a breakfast person <laughs> have it for brunch have it for lunch yes, right? yes. Yeah. and I would just say av add avocado or not uh, avocado oil or extra virgin olive oil yes. to the yes. uh, avocado toast yes. yeah looks good Mm -hmm. Definitely. Absolutely. So, Selena, do you have any other, like, maybe another story or two you can share on other patients like Nevada that have had success with the program? You know, um, we've done some research along uh, with our Food for Life Market, and so we're looking at the patients who interact with our program and following them if they have a diagnosis of diabetes, if they are looking, if they're obese and they're looking to lose weight, if they're pregnant. And some of the research, which we actually just uh, presented for the first time in October in Denver, we presented our research for the first time. It was looking at, uh, at the food conference, um, food and nutrition conference and exposition in Denver. So there's about, it's like the national conference for dietitians and food professionals. Um, there's almost, I believe, three to 5,000 people that were there. And so on a national stage, we presented this data. Um, and it really showed that people who interacted with our market, we looked at patients who interacted with our market and those who got a referral but didn't and compared those groups. And the people who interacted with our market and came to our market, and the more they came, we saw better results, um, that people would decrease their hemoglobin A1C if they were diabetic. They would lose more weight. Interestingly enough, for people who are pregnant, we found that women who are pregnant who started um, who were in the program had a starting BMI of about 31, which is 
a little bit more than we'd like to see. Um, and But what we found out is that the, the pregnant women who participated in the market actually had less weight gain overall, which is actually good. Um, we want them to gain less weight in pregnancy. They, you know, we, we try and tailor the recommendations for pregnancy weight gain based on what they're starting with. Um, and so if people are starting out a little bit on the, on the higher BMI side, we try and, and you know, make sure that they're gaining less weight in the right way, mm -hmm. right? We send them to a nutritionist and all that stuff. So it was very encouraging to see that especially for pregnant women as an expert in maternal child health, that they were having less excess weight gain in pregnancy if they were starting out a little bit heavier. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so we're excited about that. The other, one of the other studies that we've done too is looking at our pediatric patients because we have a huge amount of patients that access the food for like market um, children and their families. And we interviewed those families to find out what has it meant for them to be, um, for them to participate in the market. And what those studies have, those interviews really showed that it has um, filled a gap where parents have had to make a decision about whether or not to get their child's medication or put food on the table. Mm, very nice. So, you know, we know it's having a larger impact, not on just um, on, in, in maybe a little bit more indirect way in which patient, parents are getting their medication so that they can, you know, take care of their child's diagnosis and not having to choose between putting food on the table. Might even impact their medication. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Very nice. So the, it, the, I guess what, and I, I don't know about all the five, but um, the wellness center that's at the Davis and Glenville, that the Food for Life market is in the complex. So it's there for residents. I mean, yeah. has that made a difference versus maybe some of the other sites that you have the program? You know, the Davis is the first time we have been more community facing, meaning that we're not in a brick and mortar that's owned by UH. Um, and it's been a really exciting opportunity to kind of evolve our strategy. You know, when we first started the market, it was pre-pandemic, and we said we wanted to look at a targeted way to address food insecurity with people with comorbidities. And then as we saw during the pandemic with so many people food insecure, that we, you know, really, we need to make this available for any of our patients that are identifying as food insecure. And so we get, you know, re we get referrals from the emergency room through our community health worker program, um, through a lot of other, some of our pediatric specialties, uh, primary care, all these different areas. When we opened at the Davis, it was a different, it was a different, it's a different modality. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make these markets a little bit more community facing. And what do I mean by that? It means that this, these, we're trying to make these markets open so that they're not just for, you don't have to be a patient of UH to do it. We have a whole building, there's 52 units at the Davis. It's been an incredible partnership with the NRP group um, who've been fantastic partners with us in this space. And really just trying to think differently. I always challenge the, our team at the Wellness Center. I'm like, what is the advantage for the residents who live here of having a healthcare institution on the first floor. Mm -hmm. We always have to think about that, right? And so we did a food distribution around the holidays and we're thinking about where to do it out of, um, you know, shout out to our community engagement team. Um, we They organized one at Richmond and in Bedford and at Glenville. And for Glenville, I was very specific. I said, no, we need to supply food for the people who live here, right? That's where we need yeah. to start. Um, so we have residents who have their care at other places, other healthcare institutions. I don't want them to, they're happy with their care. We want them to stay where they are, but they still identify as food insecure. And so we're trying to make that, we're working on the process now of making sure that we can get that more forward facing to them so that they can access it and they don't have to, you know, I said the last thing we're going to do is open a food for life in a community wellness center in an apartment building in Glenville and say, no, 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 this is just for UH patients. I'm sorry, you can't participate. Um, so we went through a big uh, transition to our electronic medical record through Epic at the end of the year. So we're still working on kind of that workflow that we hope to have, you know, kind of solid and, and down in the next month or so. Outstanding, that'd be great. That'd yeah. be great for that community. Absolutely. So what, Devado, what, what's next for you? So you've kind of gone through this program you're healthier, your kids are eating healthier, your medications are down. I mean, it's it's a fantastic story. I mean, what, what's next for you? Um, what's next for me is just going on a journey to continue health, but also promoting it to other people. Mm -hmm. um, when people can see um, what I walk through, um, I literally, on my, my chart, have over 200 and something diagnosed um, health issues. To see me right now, um, post-cancer, um, after diabetes, um, to
to see some of those pictures, you would never ever be like, oh my God, this is the person before me. So I want people to understand and know this may be your diagnosis and this may be what you're dealing with right now. But if you have a mindset to live and do what it needs, do what you need to do to change and change everything that you need to change. Just start with a mindset first because we can make no one do anything. But then you have to be consistent and do the work. Then you have to be open to, well, you know, some people don't, I don't like that. I don't eat this. You know, you have to be open mm -hmm. to, to change. And with that, I like to see more and more success stories like myself, you know, um, where families are changed, where we can counteract generational like um, she said, generational, because I have a, a older son, my 22-year-old son. And within the last three years, he used to just eat junk food. He used to eat, now he eats healthy. He don't like, he work at McDonald's. He don't eat McDonald's. <laughs> he don't like to eat McDonald's. He was like, mom, I mean, pop, none of that. Everything, he used to drink energy drink. Everything has totally changed. And it's all about a healthier lifestyle, but the exposure to the fact of, okay, even though I don't really like it, let me be willing to try it. This can, you know, give me longevity of life. This can extend my life. This can uh, reverse pre-diabetes. This can reverse diabetes eventually. Maybe I can come off. I'm on so many medications. Maybe I can come off. You can live your life healthier. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing for me, living life and thriving and, you know, seeing more people do the same. Outstanding. So. Outstanding. Yeah, we had a sh uh, chef, and well, we've had many chefs on the show, but one of the chefs, he um, takes care of one of the sports teams mm -hmm. in Cleveland, and his goal is those athletes eat healthy. If they didn't eat healthy, Sorry. they wouldn't be able to perform mm -hmm. on uh, any any one of the sports here in Cleveland. And so his goal is, is to get them to start advertising healthy foods versus the processed foods right. that they typically would uh, advertise. So we'll see how that works out, but that's kind of one of his goals. Yeah, so, that would be great to see yeah. because so many um, – People, you have to use their platforms for good and, and, mm -hmm. and helping other people. And, you know, maybe, you know, being the spokesperson for Taco Bell is not the best thing <laughs> if you have a bunch of kids that look up to you. Yes. Right. Right? right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, Selena, what's next for you in, in this program, I guess? Gosh, you know, we're really excited um, that, you know, this year we want to get our research published. And so we're working on some of that with our research team looking at other things to look at, such as, as I mentioned, mental health is a huge, um, is, a, is a huge one that I'd love to look into and, and trying to work, find some partners within our, our system to work on that, those, the, that research with me. Um, we're really looking to expand the presence of the markets, um, trying to make them more community facing, um, and then look at ways in which, um, one of the most, one of the things I will say is a lot of our markets are philanthropically supported. You know, this is, we don't get reimbursed for any of this. This is what we do because at UH, we know this is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so all of this is, we count as community benefit. Um, we're very thoughtful and purposeful with the dollars that we have and making sure that we're um, serving it in a, um, in, a, in a systematic way and one that is really going to hopefully affect changes um, that you'll hear more stories like the beta. So that's what we'd like to see. We wanna make sure that um, we are utilizing um, the platform that we have to make sure that other people know about it. The other thing I'd like to say is, you know, reimbursement for some of, the, some of this from insurance companies, from the state, if we wanna look at, you know, insurance for the dietitians, mm -hmm. they're fantastic. Right, and we can't bill for their services and that to insurance companies. Uh, That's not reimbursable. Okay. The food, you know, to get the food reimbursed in a model like this, which is run by a healthcare organization. If I can get those things kind of unlocked, then mm -hmm. we can figure that out. It's a model that people could follow nationally, right? Everywhere that everyone could. Would, yeah, we we have this totally down right. to somewhat of a science, and now how we operate and own the, you know, how we've. Uh, operate the markets and how we open them up. We're looking at potential expansion in other parts of the community on the west side and other places. Ideally, I'd love to see that we have a market everywhere we are um, and maybe in schools, maybe in um, other community, in other housing um, buildings, 
Um, I know uh, the, they're very, we have some interest from people who are like, gosh, we have some other projects that are happening and we'd love to know more about having something like this because it does make such a difference for the residents. Um, so I'd love to see a lot more innovative ways which we partner with other people in these spaces to really truly affect change for people. Um, because no one organization, no one entity can do it on their own. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of really good that's being done here in the region. How do we pull all these resources together to really have a bigger impact? I think East Cleveland, the corner of Euclid and Eddie would be a great spot. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm going to ask both of you this question, but I'll ask uh, Nevada first. So if you had the attention of the world for five minutes, what would you say? <sighs> okay. <laughs> I would say I would love to see us come together as a nation, but as a people internationally to support healthier lifestyles, healthier life goals. Um, not that medicine is not good, but food is medicine also. And in my experience and what I have went through, I have seen my lifestyle changes in ways that it haven't been since my cancer diagnosis. Um, she talked about depression and anxiety. Those are some of the things that I dealt with, but my depression and anxiety has went down over the last couple of years. Can we say is everything is due to food for life? Not necessarily, but having healthier food makes me feel better. I lost weight, my A1C is down. All of those things that were problematic to me as a person, when that was reversed, it counteracted everything in my life. So I would love for us to come together as we do on other things and get behind other causes and see that Food for Life and other programs such as that are funded the way that they need to. Couldn't agree more. Thank you. You're welcome. Selena? Gosh, I mean, she's like the best spokesperson in the program. Um, but, you know, I would have to agree, I think, and, you know, I kind of said it before, is that, you know, we need to figure out ways. Um, so often healthcare organizations and, and medicine has been looked at to, you turn to that when you're ill. How do we keep people well? Yes. How do we promote healthy lifestyle, healthy living? Um, I think, I do believe that every diagnosis can be, trace back to what you put in your body mm -hmm. um, that's my personal belief not in me as a, I'm not you know representing medicine or midwifery or anything like that but I truly believe that everything that happens diagnosis wise I mean can be traced back to what you put in your body and I think that um, I'd love to see the tide change around um, how we are um, utilizing uh, food in this country um, how do we have so much in one area and we don't have enough in others um, why is there hunger? No child should be hungry. I agree. I no agree child should be hungry. Everyone should have access to food. It's a, it's a right. Um, and so how do we make sure that that's more equitable? Mm -hmm. Especially in, in kind of break down these systems of oppression that have, have kept people down. Um, that's what I would love to see happen. Um, and I think, again, we have so many rich resources and people who are doing great work in this community in Northeast Ohio. Um, how do we pull it all together for it to make sense, that we really affect a change for our all of our people here in this region. I'd love to see a space blue zone, right? You know, I don't think this is gonna happen, but um, you know, like how, you know, you never know, right? Like, but how do we really promote healthy living, healthy lifestyle, healthy access to food, equitable access to food for everyone? That's what I would love to see. And so um, I, I'm eager to see what what happens. And I, I'm, I'm grateful for our, our market and the things that we're doing at UH to be kind of a small part of that puzzle. Um, so we'll, we'll continue to work on what we can work on and control what we can, can control and, and expand our market to serve more people, but we need the region to come together in that. Fantastic. I, I agree. And I think it's it's not, I mean, the access to food is part of it, but I think the program that you have, like you know, how you talked about, I mean, understanding the recipe, seeing somebody cook it, having a nutritionist, dietitian, whatever to kind of, so you need other support resources. You can't just put a spaghetti squash in front of somebody and say, make a healthy meal. I mean, <laughs> they, they, you need, I mean, you need to figure out how to do that. So, sure. yeah. So. Absolutely. All right. Well, the last piece of every episode, we talk about a recipe. So I know Macy 
uh, emailed me your lentil taco recipe, so maybe you can explain a little bit about it. And I'm also interested, I don't know if this was a UH thing. Or it or is. Know, That's, that is one okay. of my favorite recipes that I got from the Food for Life program. That's what I wanted to say, yes. Yeah, and it's interesting, I mean, because I post these recipes on yeah. my website after um, when we post the, the podcast, and this, I also try to get the cost for everything, because mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep, so the purpose under twenty five dollars, make it in less than thirty minutes for a family of four, mm -hmm. and I know you have a bigger family than that, but for a family of four and um, a few ingredients. So I mean, this obviously fits a category. I think this has a little bit more prep time. But what's interesting about this is so there's a website that you can go to, and it has the not only the ingredients, but it, it lays out the cost for everything mm -hmm. that you're making. I've mm -hmm. never seen that before. It's yeah. called uh, Budget Bites. Yeah. So. Yeah. Maybe explain um, the recipe a little bit. Um, okay. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, yeah, because I don't remember it all. <laughs> One of the things that I like about the lentil tacos is the fact that we can go meatless. So they give us a vegan option. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm not vegan. I'm not totally vegan, but I like eating like that. That's one of the things that I've learned through um, dietitians to be open. So like sometimes I eat Mediterranean, sometimes I eat vegan, sometimes I go vegetarian. So that's one of the things. But then you can have all the things that you have on a regular taco, the onion, the pico de gallo, mm -hmm. and you make it all fresh at home. But even the tacos, um, the sour cream. And sometimes with the sour cream, you can go light. Sometimes I don't use sour cream. I make my own avocado or guacamole out of avocados. So, you know, you can go either way. But whatever works for you and your family is a meal that is, it doesn't take long to prepare. It's a meatless option. And it tastes good. And as I said, you can add your own little things to it. Like I use different seasonings and I'm low to no sodium, mostly no sodium. If I do use salt, I use pink Himalayan salt, just a mm -hmm. little sprinkle, but not too much because of the diabetes and things like that. I don't use too much sodium. So I use some of the things like the Mrs. Dash type seasonings and things like that. I do use other seasons like cumin and things like that and that all of those things make it so much better and it tastes so good mm -hmm. and so recipes like this my family enjoy it's inexpensive and it works yeah, and inexpensive know? that's less than ten dollars yes. for eight people I very mean, that's, inexpensive that's very inexpensive yes yeah. yes so you won't you know have to go all out and i mean i think we spend actually twice as much if i bought ground beef and mm -hmm. all the fixings and everything for that so you know, it's this is one of the reasons I like the Food for Life program. Yeah, if you turn that over, it lists out the spices that you, I mean. Yes, so like it says, uh, taco seasoning, uh, chili powder, smoked paprika, cumin, cayenne, oregano. So, so there there you go. Instead of buying the high sodium taco seed yep. in the store, you can do that exactly. all on your own. And I, I've learned that over my journey. So that's that's what I have in my cabinet, like these type of spices to, to make my own. Um, we don't, sometimes I use them, but I buy the low sodium packets sometimes mm -hmm. if, you know, I'm on the go and I'm making them for the kids. But it's better, as Selena said, to do it on your own, to fix things on your own. Um, even to do everything on your own. Like I've even gotten to the point like if you don't buy mashed potatoes in a box or in a pack and I like to make my own homemade mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. My kids love for me to cook. I used to cook a lot um, before our, my illness and sickness. So that's one of the things that we bond over as a family because we do it as a team, which is wonderful. So you get the whole team involved and have everybody do their part. You have the little ones do something like grate some cheese or something like that. And, you know, everybody gets involved and it's a family meal. So yeah, that's those, perfect. And those family meals are important. I mean, getting everybody together yes. to eat together versus yeah. just... Well, the way a lot of people eat. Yes, I mean, scattered right. apart. Scattered apart, exactly. Yes. Get to have a conversation, yes. get to make something together. Yes. It's very, very Yeah, important. time to connect with your kids. Yes. And, you know, just, and those are the memories that will keep yes. them, right? Like, yes. I think about the times that, you know, I got to cook in the kitchen when my grandmother was visiting yes. from the Philippines, yes. right? It's those times, those, I, I still remember those memories, yes, right? I'm yes. still, I'm trying to perfect all my mom's Filipino cooking. Yes. You know, as they get older, you know, every time I go home, mom, can you teach me how to make this? <laughs> She's like, what, you want to know now? I was like, yeah. Um, you know, and I'm teaching my kids that too. Yes, um, and they are having great appreciation for it. So yes, that, that family time is so important. It very, it very much is. Outstanding. 
Any any comments on the, I guess the... No, I love it. I haven't tried that one. I'm going to have to try that, I think. Um, we're always looking for more meatless options in my family as I'm trying to get in, you know, lots of protein in, in my diet, especially in, um, in midlife, especially for women. Mm -hmm. um, trying to get more protein every day and trying to think about ways I can do that. So, um, and not by by not eating a lot of meat. So um, I'm going to have to try this one, I think, and um, see see how it is at home. But um, I, I think cooking is um, is the great unifier, too, mm -hmm. right? Everyone loves talking about their culture and their food. Um, and it's I think food is, is that uh, unifier. It's the way that we bring people together. Um, and so for um, and so I love the, the stories you're telling about cooking with your kids because I just have, I, I think that that's so important to instill those good, those good habits now yes. while they're younger. Very much so. Um, I, I was just talking to them because my oldest, he does uh, sports. And sometimes, like, I work um, nights or in the evenings, and he was like, Mom, you want me to cook? I said, well, yeah, go ahead. And they cook, they cook, they get together, and, like, he was like, well, I'll fix this, and you're going to fix this, and, you know, they delegate. And all that. So that's when I came awesome. home the other day, the meal was prepped. You know, and cooked and all that. So it's teaching them. It's leading by example. Kids do as we mm -hmm. do. They don't just do as we say. We can mm -hmm. tell them certain things, but it's leading by example. Absolutely. And that's one of my mom's main philosophies as how she raised us, but also one of my main philosophies as to how I raise my children. We're not perfect as parents. We don't pretend to be. We don't have all the answers. We don't know everything which eat. A growing milestone in each age. I got different ages in my home, 22, 14, 13, 10, 7, and um, 5. So with that being said, you know, there's many different things going on, many different personalities <laughs> on a given day. But the one thing I tell certain people is you don't let children decide everything. And that even goes for my 22-year-old. Mm -hmm. He's a grown man. And yes, he made decisions. But if I'm cooking a meal, it's like, okay, we're going to all do this together. So you have to learn to be that person and be what they need to be. And my kids see me as a leader. My 22-year-old say, Mom, you're a beast. <laughs> so you, just keep, you keep going and going and going, and I don't know how you do it. You're a machine. And I'm like, really? I don't even see myself. <laughs> but he told me one time, and I get inspiration from my children. Mm -hmm. He said, Mom, I've seen you when you were sick, when you were not feeling well and he said you consistent you just you he said i've seen where you've only got an hour of sleep and you get right back up and go for us for our sake mm -hmm. he said mom that's why i love you so much Aww. and that that to me i'm trying to keep from crying yeah. <laughs> but that is sentimental when you yeah. do what you're supposed to do as a parent mm -hmm. and like i said i'm not perfect none of us are we don't do everything right but you put your best foot forward and you have them in mind believe me It'll yield good fruit later. Mm -hmm. Definitely so. so true. Couldn't agree. Yeah. yeah. So, so true. Yes. Well, thank you very much for both of you for being here today. This has been fantastic. And I hope we got a lot of listeners paying attention to this. Um, my wife teaches at a, a school in the, the near west side. She just told her students about this podcast now oh, and make sure they listen to it as well. Oh, so, wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you for what you're trying to do and just trying to get a better awareness for her and helping to tell the stories, which will hopefully inspire people to begin their own journey and, and teach their kids healthy cooking and, and how food can uh, help heal people. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you both. so much for having me. Please follow our show every week where you listen to podcasts. Leave a comment on the website or on the uh, podcast. And gratefully yours, Ken. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here and listening. And uh, have a great week. Thank you. Thank you.